But let's get stuck into the show menu tonight. My first guest is a spoken word artist born and raised in Church Road, North West London. He officially started to write in 2017 and started performing in 2018. He's the recent winner of UK Entertainment Awards 2019 Best Poet and he's the founder of the Poetry Jam spoken word platform that's getting a lot of buzz right now. So welcome to the scene, Terrell the Poet. Evening, evening people, evening London town. Jasmine how are we doing? I'm very well. How are you? I'm great, thank you for You asking. don't mind that we're not award winners, do you? Nah, not at all. You appreciate all. how great I, the scene is, don't you? As we had a discussion outside, I appreciate your work. Oh, bless you. That's very <laughs> kind of you. Now, we can't wait to get into your work, but before that, you know what it is. It's Thursday, so I've got to ask you, please, introduce yourself and tell us which of London's cultural tribes you represent. Tribe London, Tribe R&B, Tribe Jamaica, Tribe Fashion, Tribe Terrell, Tribe Poetry, Tribe Spoken Word, Tribe Dope Boy, Tribe Swag, Tribe Lover, Tribe Fighter, Tribe Brother, Tribe Son, Tribe Friend, Tribe Positive Energy, Tribe Positive Mental Attitude, Tribe Positive Mindset, Tribe Live, Laugh, Love, Tribe I Can Do This, Tribe I Can, Tribe Go Getter, Tribe Ambitious, Tribe Driven, Tribe Get Ready, Tribe Watch This Space, Tribe BBC Radio London, The Word. <laughs> tribe, I love everybody, Tribe. Tribe the Poetry Jam. Tribe the Poetry Jam. Tribe Poetry. Tribe Poetry. Tribe, tribe, tribe Terrell Lewis. Tribe Make Love Not War. Yep, yep, tribe, come on. Yeah, Tribe Let's Do This. <laughs> Ten seconds, come on now. Uh, tribe I Love You, Tribe You Love Me, <laughs> Tribe We Love Us. <laughs> well styled out. Thank you, thank you for joining us. It's Terrell Lewis, a.k.a. Terrell the Poet. Terrell, it's not your first time on the scene, but we have got you back on again yeah. so that you can tell us about an event that you're having on the Poetry Jam. But before we get to that, I want to ask you a little bit about yourself. Are you a yeah. born and bred Londoner? Born and bred, North West London. Okay, same as me. Stonebridge, Harlston, wow. Ealing, Southall. Yeah, that's what happens when your parents split up when you're younger. You've got a few different <laughs> tribes, but yeah. we're in the same vicinity. What part of North West were you in? Church Road. Yeah, which Tell is... us a little bit about how that area shaped you coming up. Um... Well, Church Road Estate, to be fair, it, it's, it's, it was an amazing place to grow up for me personally because we was a community. And, you know, with the amazing mother that I had, my house was the, the go-to house. So, you know, I had the pool table, the basketball, the PlayStation, snooker table. You know, my house was kind of like the open door policy where all of the kids can come and there was the a guarantee. Club. The social club. You had a club. very cool mum. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. And, um, you know, growing up on the estate, you know, we had, we, we had, um, the cage so the cage was you know our where you played football and that's what made because that made me a footballer you know and you know we had play scheme we had the acorn boys club which is now knocked down they don't even have that anymore and you know going back to church on now it's obviously it was known for being the white flats but now it's obviously built up and it's now concrete um a lot of the um my friends are still there but there is also a lot of new faces um who are there as well but the area it's yeah that's it played a massive part in the person that I am today, definitely. And when we think about an area like that, we don't necessarily think someone would be affected or inspired by or fall in love with poetry, right? Because when I was coming up in that area, it was all about hip hop, break dancing, R and B, bashment, yeah. a bit of sports if we were lucky. But poetry always seemed to be a little bit, mm, I don't know, worthy. I guess my generation at school were like mm, a bit kind of poetry. Is it really for us? How did you fall in love with poetry? So I, um, back in 2017, I got introduced to poetry by my children's mum. Um, and I got introduced to a bunch of poets over in the US. Um, and then I left London five years ago. So I'm now living down south towards the Portsmouth area. And the transition from going from London to Portsmouth. So I've obviously got all of my social network here, i.e. friends and family. So the transition was quite difficult and it took its toll on me mentally. So my only outlet was to write. And I dabbled in MC and back in the day because I grew up in the garage era. So I wasn't a stranger to words. And my mum's also a writer as well. So I just kind of vented and unknowingly it was coming out poetic. And see, in my era, I think the way we got into poetry was, do you remember films like Love Jones? You know, hip hop poetry that is and the spoken the same vibe word. that I want to create. Yeah, that's when I started thinking, oh, maybe yeah. I could get into poetry. Because before that, it was whatever I did in English literature at school. Yeah. But yeah, so you fell in love with poetry because it was an outlet for you. Yeah. And then what would you say was your first big break? 
my first big break came in December 2018 at a show called the LOL Show, Laugh Out Loud, um, which is a comedy show put on by two friends of mine. Uh, shout out to Junior and Darren Watson for putting on the show. So it's a comedy show. So Kojo, the comedian, he was a good friend of mine. He was the host of that show. And the importance of that show was it being, it was back in London. So this was my first show as a spoken word artist back in London. And the magnitude of this show um, was really high because everybody from the ends was there well my area and i'm obviously known as a sports person so to associate terrell lewis with poetry they're like oh i've got to see this so the stakes were really quite high for me to deliver so obviously i've got there kojo's introduced me the curtains have you know opened up and i'm on stage and i killed it i absolutely killed it and i'm on stage with richard blackwood slim the comedian also as well kojo so there were some massive names that i was performing alongside but I was remembered. I wasn't outshone by any of those names. And there was a person to this day, I don't know who it was, who recorded it. Four minutes and 38 seconds of footage of myself, which mm -hmm. went viral. And that was my first time ever experiencing going viral via social media. So that literally opened the floodgates for me. So December 2018 was what birthed everything now. What was the subject of that four minute poetry? It was called Today's Society. <laughs> <laughs> it was called what? Today's Society. So it was literally just um, growing up as a, a black kid in London and some of the um, trials and tribulations that, you know, I had to face. And I was just literally just venting. Do you remember any of it now? Give us a couple of lines. <laughs> <laughs> I get sad and frustrated when I think about today's society. You see, this country is ran by a corrupt government that's fed the public nothing but lies. So the thought of a black prime minister, that doesn't even inspire me. However, what I eventually aspire to be is something more than a stereotypical black individual that's seen by the public as doing the bare minimal. Yeah, I wear hoodies and snapbacks, but does that make me a criminal? And if I get stopped by police, I don't respond or act typical. Why? Because I'm much older and I realise what part of the problem is. There's loads of mums and dads out here, but not enough parents to educate these kids. Instead, we've got young heads on old shoulders. The youngest, they demand respect from the olders. They're taught to fight the wrong war, so we're left to fight ours with not enough soldiers. That's all you're getting. <laughs> love that. Very political, very social. Love a bit of social commentary. Okay, so I see what the vibe is <laughs> yeah. with Terrell Lewis. And this is why you're the recent winner of the UK Entertainment Awards 2019 Best Poet nomination and winner. Loving that, loving that. Yeah. So you're the founder of the Poetry, the Poetry Jam. Jam. Tell yeah. us what the Poetry Jam is. When and how was it inspired? Okay, so I had a... Um, June the 14th, 2019, I actually was dismissed from a job. Um, I didn't do anything bad, but yeah, I got dismissed from a job role. And um, I, I, ran, I was on my way to a show in South London and I ran Kojo, who's a very good friend of mine. And so I, Kojo was recently on Britain's Got, Britain's Talent. Got Talent. and He's also one today. of my first talent that I signed up for the MTV base um, comedy, Kojo's Comedy Funhouse. Yeah. He's someone who brings people together, doesn't he? He's he had does. comedy events all over London and the UK for the last two decades. Exactly. He's now going on his own tour. So he's a connector. So he's been someone that's instrumental in bringing oh, you Oh, 100%. Up. 100%. So I literally ran Kojo um, June the 14th and I had to explain to him the situation and I said listen you know I really want to do something with my poetry I want to do something big and um, I said I just really just want to get the message out there so he, he calmed me down because I was a little bit shaken and he said to me all right this is what we're going to do we're going to put on a show we brainstormed some names and we came up with the poetry jam and he says don't worry about the venue I've got it sorted what I need for you to do is just find the poets and we'll bring it all together. So August 26th last year, which was Bank Holiday uh, Monday, which was the same day as Carnival, we launched our first show at the W Hotel and we sold out. Very fancy. Yeah. I remember when Kojo used to do his comedy jams down at Cork's Wine Bar yeah, I across know. the road yeah, from yeah. Selfridges. There you go, yeah. So you've upgraded. It's, upgraded, it's hotels yeah. now. Yeah, it? literally, yeah. So, you know, it was a very good turnout. And as soon as the show finished, they wanted a date for the next one. They wanted a confirmation of date for the next one. So, but I didn't... Um, you know factor that into you know I didn't factor it in at all so we took it upon ourselves to plan it and you know we launched our, our second show on November the t 12th 10th I think it was it was, it was in November what's the vibe like at your shows oh, is gosh. it inclusive for everyone or is it yeah, you know, so, just a okay. certain crowd no nah, not at all not at all so I'm I'm tapping into a market that not necessarily understands poetry and that's what that's 
that's that's um, that's the gap that I want to bridge. So when I you know took it to market and done some market research, I asked people, "What's what do you associate poetry with? Do you even like poetry?" And a lot of people said no. They associate it with, you know, like anthology, clicking fingers, not really my thing, <laughs> etc. And I was like, you're the perfect person that I want to bring to my show. And everybody that's come to my show has said they love poetry. They didn't know that they love poetry. So my show, so the aim of it is to give people an experience into the modern art form of what spoken word actually is. Because a lot of us now have been influenced by grime, rap, hip hop. So we deliver it a little bit more punchy. I mean, poetry is a staple of hip hop culture. 100%. Do you think, obviously, poetry existed before hip hop, but now, does poetry make hip hop or does hip hop make poetry? I think they both complement each other because both of them are expressives. Um, and obviously, with, with spoken word, there's. Okay, so to kind of break it down, so rap in itself, the acronym for rap is actually rhythm and poetry. So obviously it's, it's a combination of lyrical genius and you writing a rhythm, whereas poetry is a little bit more a cappella. You can layer it over a track as well, but the majority of the artists perform it um, a cappella. Um, I definitely feel that spoken word yeah, you know, to answer the question, they just definitely complement each other. You, yeah, you can't. Other. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, you can't have one without the other. They definitely go hand in hand. Something else that complements poetry, I think, is the internet. Because now, when I look on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter, there are poets writing reams of poetry out there. And yeah. You would have never imagined that the internet would contribute to just blowing the poetry scene up. So, do the internet and social media contribute to the well-being of poetry? One hundred percent, and not just poetry any any kind of new wave or craze the internet will have an impact on and obviously because us being in a digital area we're on our phones a good at least 70 percent of the time we have a, a mobile handheld device in our hand so that obviously makes content accessible and you know it extends our reach of you know the audiences that we can touch so definitely you know in the internet now is a powerful tool like for the videos that i've done um, I had a you know a video that went viral last year, a poem called "The Black Woman," that reached America, Africa. I had women That's you know contacting me from all over the world about how their poem, you know, resonated with them, and it's you know so that got sent over on WhatsApp, Facebook. So I can't track the algorithm. I don't even know. Yeah, I don't even know the numbers. But it's incredible, isn't it, what it's done? What are your thoughts about the current poetry scene right here in London, and what are your plans for the future? So my thoughts currently right now is it's getting better. We are slowly breaking the mold and getting the exposure and recognition. Not we're not there yet. Um, what I said, you know, I said this earlier today um, in another interview. It, there's there's a round table and there's one empty seat with the name spoken word on it. So that seat is vacant, which is soon to be occupied. Very very soon. I like that visual representation. <laughs> Interestingly, I always wonder with poetry because poems, you, you wear your heart on your sleeve and you're sharing yeah. such sensitive, quite personal material. Yeah. Have you ever regretted sharing a poem for any reason? No, nah, not at all. So I love the fact that I'm able to put myself in a vulnerable position and be accepted. And I feel that a lot of us don't like or don't know how to be vulnerable. And I'm at a stage where I've got a lot of strength where you can project something onto me and I can voice it, I can tell it in a story. And that's where a lot of people, you know, they can relate and my, my stuff resonates with them because a lot of people go through, we all got something that everyone can relate to, but nobody talk. That's That's the thing that what we don't do, we don't talk. We don't even talk to each other. I know, Enough. we text each other we all the time, don't other. we? When yeah. people phone each other now, people are horrified. They don't know what to Someone's do. Someone's calling me, I exactly. don't know how to answer the phone. Exactly, yeah. So, but, we, yeah, so with, so with you know, the spoken word that I do, that's how I engage everyone and open up the, the lines of communication. Well, let's open up the lines of communication now. Let's engage with us. Can you perform what something for us? Tell us what you'd like to do for us. Um, I like this piece called Brave. Um, I, and this piece is really significant just because, you know, we at some point we are all going to be required to do something brave. And it's all about courage. So I hope you like it. This piece is called 
brave. But take it away exclusively for BBC Radio London on the scene. This is Terrell the Poet, Terrell Lewis and Brave. I once had someone tell me that I am brave. And it was at that moment I realised there was things in my life I needed to rearrange in order to maintain. At first I never wanted to. I was scared. But within that fear I was able to find strength and courage to make all doubt disappear. So today, I am here. Not only have I started believing, but I'm also achieving what is my life's purpose because I understand and now have a deeper meaning. Now I have scars from being brave. And if those scars could talk, this is what they say. They say, Terrell, these marks are reminders of the battles that you faced. And each one relates to a time, date and place where you didn't let the challenges stand in your way and you continue to give chase. Now I ain't talking about the marks you can physically see. No, these marks are embedded in me and they're a constant reminder that no one out there is better than me. I am brave. I wear my scars like a soldier would wear a medal. Because when life decides to tip the scales, I stay calm and remain level. Because I can't disguise the feeling inside that I constantly feel special. Because I single-handedly survived my dance with the one they call the devil. You see, I realised that no one can save me but the brave me because I got rid of the things that pain me in order to live pain-free. Each task was another lesson learned. Another stripe I earned so I could speak up in order for my voice to be heard. And the louder it got allowed me to build bridges, however some of those bridges got burned. Now at some point, you will be required to do something brave. And the only thing I say is that you have faith and decide to not turn away. Because without being brave, you will stay and remain. And there's no one to blame but you. So I need for you to let go of fear, doubts, worry. Now these are all things that we give life to. And if you currently feel dead inside, then these words should revive you. Because I need for you to let go of the negativity that's inside you. Because we all are brave and I'm here to remind you that you are brave. Incredible <laughs> rhythm and flow by Terrell the Poet. And that is why you're the winner of the UK Entertainment Awards Best Poet category. Well done and congratulations. Thank Just you before so much. you run off, tell us where our listeners can join you in real life, online. When's the next Poetry Jam? So the next Poetry Jam is Sunday the 1st of March at the Backyard Comedy Club in Bethnal Green. Uh, tickets can be purchased via shubs.com, S-H-O-O-B-S.com. Or you can follow me on Instagram, which is ty, T-Y underscore Terrell, T-E-R-R-E-L-L. -L. That's T-Y underscore Terrell, T-E-R-R-E-L-L. -L. All Thank the information Thank you so there. much for Thank joining you. us. Catch him live. Won't that be an incredible experience? Thank you so much for Thank joining so us much, evening. Jasmine. So I'll be speaking to our second guest in a moment. You have time to run to the loo, grab a cuppa. Where are you enjoying me? I want to know where you are. Or have you, like Janet, who tweeted in, taken me into the bath with you? Janet, you're going to get wrinkly. Don't stay in there for too long. All right. All right. My next guest is...